Module 6, Lesson 15, More Practice with Box Plots. So it's given a box plot. Students will estimate the values that make up the five number summary. That is the minimum, the Q1, median, Q3, and the maximum. Students describe a data set using the five number summary and the interquartile range. And students construct a box plot of the five number summary. So it says you reach into a jar of Tootsie Pops. How many Tootsie Pops do you think you can hold in one hand? Do you think the number you could hold is greater or less than what other students can hold? Is the number you could hold a typical number of Tootsie Pops? This lesson examines these questions. Now, don't think of this as the questions of how many Tootsie Pops you can hold, but do they vary, does yours vary, or is it a typical number that other students can hold? So example one, Tootsie Pops. 94 people were asked to grab as many Tootsie Pops as they could hold. Here is a box plot of these data. Are you surprised? So, so students might indicate that they are surprised that some people were able to hold as many as 40. Right here would be those that could hold 40. And others might be surprised at how much person-to-person -person variability is. So going from 5 or probably about 7 to 42, that's a big variability. They also may comment on the fact that about half the people are able to hold between 18 and 23 Tootsie Pops. So 18 to 23 there. So that's just looking at the box plot. Now, it says, how many Tootsie Pops do you think you can hold in one hand? Make a prediction. So just based on this, I would think I could probably hold around 21. Okay, how do you find the upper and lower quartiles? So, Q1 and Q3. You would order the data, find the median of the ordered data, and then find the middle of the top half and the bottom half as the upper and lower quartiles. So we find the median, and since now we've got it broke into two parts here, we can find the median of the lower and the upper. What is the five number summary? These are your five number summaries right here. You got one, two, three, four, and five. And so you have the minimum, the lower quartile Q1, the median, the upper Q quartile or Q3, and the maximum value. So, about what fraction of the data value should be in each section of the box plot? Well, we should have one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, and one fourth. Exercise one through five. What might explain the variability in the Tootsie Pops, number of Tootsie Pops that 94 people? Are able to hold. So if you just think about this, if you're asking 94 people, just think if we asked every student at our school, which is about 100 students, to grab a hold of the Tootsie Pops, how many is everybody going to be able to grab? Well, if you think about a senior and their hand size and a kindergarten and their hand size, that's going to be different. So that's one thing that might change is maybe their ages. Or so the people's hand, the hand span, would have able to flexible to move their fingers. That's another one. So let's use the dot plot to estimate the values of the five number summary. So if we were to go back, we didn't actually do those. So let's go back and look. We're just going to estimate. Because we don't actually, that's the problem with box plots, we don't actually have the values there. Okay, 
So here we would say this is maybe about 43. Whoops. About 43. This would be about 23. So Q3. The median's about 21. So this would be about 18, 19, something like that. And then we would have this at what, 7. If we were just to look at our dot plot down through here. I guess maybe that should be 20 and 22. Should be maybe 20. And we'll call that, we'll call that one 20. Move that one 23. And then this dot here, this very last one, would be 7 and 43. Let's see what they say. 7, 18, 20, 22, and 42. Okay, pretty close. Look, estimate. Describe how the box plot can help you understand the difference in the number of Tootsie Pops people can hold. So what does that box plot actually tell us? Well, it's tells us that there are about 42 this is the maximum, 7 is the minimum, which indicates a lot of variability. The more spread out that box plot is, the longer it is, means a lot of variability. So it covers 40, or 35, because 42 minus 7 is 35, so that is our spread. The box part of the box plot shows that about half of the people can hold about two Tootsie Pops from the median. And what that means is our bots here, we had a median of 20, and then this was 22 and 18. So, and this should represent about 50%. Okay. So 50% could hold around two Tootsie Pops from the median, and the median was about 20. So 50% of the people are going to hold between 18 and 22 Tootsie Pops. Here's Jane's description of what she sees in the box plot. Do you agree with her description? Explain why. She says that one person could hold as many as 42 Tootsie Pops. The number of Tootsie Pops could, people could hold was different and spread about equally from 7 to 42. About one half of the people could hold more than 20 Tootsie Pops. Okay? It says you cannot tell that they are spread out evenly in a box plot, okay? But uh, it says the box plot contains about half of the values for the Tootsie Pop. So the box part should always cover about half of the values, okay? However, the box is only using four units long. There's only four units. That means half of the people were bunched near those four numbers. So that would tell us that since half are right here, that it's probably not spread evenly. Okay, so we would say no, that's not spread evenly. But everything else could work. Five, here is a box plot of the same data on the number of Tootsie Pops 94 people could hold. Okay, so it's the same data, but it just looks a little different. Okay, and it says, why do you suppose that there are five values that are shown as separate points? Okay, whenever you see something like this, there's a little asterisk here. Those are what we call outliers. Okay. And it kind of means like they really don't fit in there, but we had them, so we got to put them out there. Okay. So the majority, you got to think there's 94 people, and there's only five right here. So that's 89. 89 other values fall in this range right here. Okay. So. It says maybe because they're too far away from most of the other values, it shows that more than half of the data are from 12 to 27 Tootsie Pops. Okay. Way more than half. 
Now, B says, does knowing that these data values change anything about your response to 1 through 4? Not really, except we can kind of narrow it down some more. So say that only a few people could hold more than 30. Because here we really don't have anybody over 20, what is that, 26. Okay. And we only had two people that could hold more than 30. And only a few people could hold 10 or fewer. There's only three people that hold 10 or less. So not really, it just kind of helps us to get a better understanding. Exercise 6 through 10 says maximum speeds, the maximum speed of selected birds and land animals are given in the tables below. So we have a peregrine falcon, 242 miles per hour. That's a fast bird. And then we got a pig, it's 9 miles per hour. So that would be our range. So this is one of the fastest recorded speeds for a human was 27.79 miles per hour for Usain Bolt during the 100 meter in 2009. How does this human speed compare to other land animals? Well, it's only faster. Right here would be Bolt. Oh, something horrible be. So Bolt is right here. So he's only faster than the elephant and the pig. Cats are faster, grizzly bears are faster. The human speed is similar to the fastest speeds of elephants and wild cats. So the cat's about 30, so and grizzly bears, so it's close to that. But he's only faster than an elephant. All right, as you look at the speeds, what strikes you as the most interesting? I don't even know what some of these are. Eurasian hobby? I don't know what that is. I know that birds are a lot faster than animals, or a lot faster than... So your birds are a lot faster than your land animals. The only thing that can fly or pretail bat in flight, so that's kind of a wink. That's a not a bird, but it's flying, right? The cheetah is the only thing that is comparable to a, a bird. I guess you could kind of say this antelope is too. It's at 55 miles per hour. Let's see what they say. Some students might suggest that birds are really fast, especially for the falcon. Others might suggest that there are only two of the speeds have decimals. Yeah. And the speeds of specific animals just might strike students as interesting. Now, do birds or land animals seem to have the greatest variability in speed? Well, birds are 242 to minus 60, which is going to be 20. Three. Oh, Twenty-three. Okay, subtract now. So there's a difference or a variability of 182. Well, this is only 75, so it can't be that much. Maybe what 66. So definitely the bird has the greater variability. Okay. Bird would. Yep. Now let's look. Find the five number summary for the speed of each of the data sets, which is right below. What do the five number summaries tell you about the distribution of the speeds for each data set? Well, here it is, land animal five summary. You always want to write it in this order too, from least to greatest. So it's always going to be the minimal, Q1, median, Q3, and the max. Always write it in that order. And so there those are. You should have been able to find those. Two of them you can find just by looking at the data, the minimum and the maximum. Right? Then it was long, now we have them in order. Okay, let's get bolt off of here. We have them in order from least to greatest if we're going in the 
bottom up. And so we would have a median for the birds to be about 97 and a half, which is right here. And for the land animals, it's going to be 43.97, which is the horse. Okay. And then we would just half the upper half and the lower half. So for the birds, we have in the lower half is in between here at 76. And then the Q3 would be 105.5, which is right here. And notice how it breaks those up evenly. All of them have three in each section. Now, if we look at the land animal, we're going to have Q1 is 32.5, which is in between here. And if we look at Q3, we're going to be at 50, which is going to be right here. We have four in each section here with a median. Okay. All right, several sentences describe, oh, well, here's the dot plot, if we do the dot plot. Okay. Look at the greater variability here in the birds. Now it says, write several sentences describing the speeds of birds and land animals. Well, really this is just taking uh, your five-point summary and writing those out. So we've got the fastest is the falcon, 242. Three-fourths of the birds fly less than 106 miles per hour, and the slowest bird flies at 60. So it's kind of, so here we're talking about three-fourths instead of half or a quarter or anything like that. And then we do the same thing for the land animals. So for instead, instead we talk about the middle half being, or the, um, the lower range being 32.5 to 50 miles per hour. So that's kind of like your middle 50 there, in the middle half, from the lower Q1 to the Q3. Let's go to page six. It says, what is the same and what is the difference? So it's considered in the following box plot, which show the number of correctly answered questions on a 20-question quiz for students in three different classes. So what is the same? Well, the same would be the median here. The median is all 12. And let's look at the rest of it. Looks like we got the same range here, too. All right, let's see. So describe the variability in the... So to describe it, we would say that the range, the maximum and the minimum, is the same for all three, and so is the median. But the intervals that confirm the middle half... I'm sorry, that... Let's see what that says. I don't think that's confirmed. But I'm not for sure what that is. Um, let's see here. The length of the box part. Okay, so the what is the middle? Uh, Fifty percent is different here. Is what that's trying to get. See how this one is here to here, and then all of these here and here. Okay. So the third class has a small box, and the scores in the middle are close together. In class two, the minimum and lower quartile are the same. I cannot get that. There it is. Uh, are the same score and the uh, maximum number, maximum and upper quartile are also the same scores. In the middle half of the score in class one and spread out more than class three. Okay. So all they wanted you to do there is just kind of look at all these different things and talk about the variability and the difference. Okay. Variability is all going to be the same, though, because we all have the minimum and the maximum. We all have the median. So being able to look at that, you can tell a lot about your stuff. And so this says that the box plot for class 2 may be difficult for students to interpret at first. If they have trouble, consider discussing the example provided earlier in the teacher notes that shows how it is possible that the minimum and the lower quartile might be equal and how the upper quartile and the maximum might be equal. Okay. 
So what that's going to mean is, what if we have a lot of, because we really don't know these exact values right here. Okay. But we do know we got something like 5, 5, 5, 12. Uh, there's 20 questions, but we don't know. So 20, 20, 20, 20. Uh, 20. Don't know how many is in the class, though, do we? Okay. So something like that. We've already had a couple of these. And let's say another 20 here. So this. Q3 would be 20, and this Q1 would be 5, and then we have our median here. So that's how having certain numbers like that would make it look like this. We don't really have any outliers. We don't have any... Um, so nobody missed less than 5. Or, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. And then we have nobody, of course, that could get more than 20 correct. Okay. 12 says, estimate the interquartile range for each of the three sets. Well, if we were to estimate this interquartile range, we would have this to be about 8 and this to be about 19. Or maybe that is 18, sorry. This is about 18. So that's going to be 10. Here, we would have 5 and 20. Subtract that and you get 15. And then here we have what, 9 and 15, which would be 6. Simple. Take Q, or take the two ends of the boxes and subtract them. So what fraction of students would have scores in the interval that extends from the lower quartile to the upper quartile? Well, what happened there? What fraction of students would have scores in the interval that extend from the lower quartile to the upper quartile? So there should be 50% between here and here. Every time, should be 50%. Now... What does the quartile, what does the value for the IQR tell you about how many scores are distributed? How the scores are distributed? So for class one, half of the scores are spread over an interval of the width of 10. For the class three, half of it's only for six. Okay. So for class two, though, the middle half of the data is spread over an interval of 15. And in fact, because the quartiles are equal to the minimum and the maximum, all the data values. So that's what's happening right here. There's a hundred percent in between these. And here there should be about 50 percent. So this is a rare occasion here. This is not normal. You're not normally going to see that. Unless you probably don't have enough data points. Okay. It's going to be very odd that you have four students score five, four students that score 20, and one that scores a 12. Maybe with a small class, but if you have a big class, that, that won't be the case. So which class do you believe performed the best? Be sure to use the information from the bot spot to back up your data. Which one performed the best? Well, I'm going to have to say probably Q3 or class 3 here. Because at least they scored above the median would have been about a 60. Okay. Uh, but not many people scored below 50%. Not as many people. So you got more that scored above 50%. That's probably what I would say. Class 3, as it has the smallest IQR, about half the students scored closer to the median. Scores were more consistent for this class. Approximately 25% of the students in class one scored 18 or higher. Uh, so that's a good one. See here is 18 or higher is 25% of the class. Um, so they're saying that class one performed the best. And then class two, 
Students may have scored near the top of Q3 and maximum of the same point, therefore class two performed the best. So uh, this is another one of those questions. As long as you can back up your answer, then you should not get it wrong. Okay. It's not just your opinion, though, it's you have to back it up. All right. Question 14 says. Find the IQR of the three data points in the first two examples, maximum speed of birds and the uh, Tootsie Pops. Well, hopefully you know to take the IQR, you take Q3 and minus Q1. And you will get the, is equal to the IQR. So that's all you had to do there. And which data set had the highest percentage of data values between the lower quartile and the upper quartile? All the data, all the data sets should have about 50, half or 50%. That's always the case. Should be, uh, not 83, Q3. Q3 to Q1. Uh, let me do it. I don't know why I keep going around the eight there. So Q1 to Q3 should be 50%. Should be every time. Now a teacher asks a student to draw a box plot with a minimum value at 34 and a maximum at 64 and had the interquartile range of 10. Jeremy said he could not draw just one because he did not know where to put the box on the number line. Do you agree with Jeremy? Why or why not? Yeah, so if we draw a box plot here, and we've got a 34 and a 64, okay, there's our N, okay, but our IQR is 10. So we know that this could be like 44 to 54, right? We could do that, but we don't know what the median is, okay? So you need to know what the median is first. Because it can be drawn, this 10 could be drawn anywhere in between that. We don't know. If the median is, let's say, 52, okay, then it would look something like this, right? We don't know, though. Got to know what that median is. Everything's going to be based on that. All right, what values include in the five numbers? I mean, you got to know these. Minimum, Q1, median, Q3, and the max. And it should be in that order from least to greatest. What does the mean? What does it mean when the bots part of the bots plot is very small? Okay means that the middle half of the data values are bunched up near the median and that the IQR is a small number. So what that means is, what if we have this and we got this little bitty box plot right here? Okay. And let's just say this is like zero and this is like 300. That means we got a really small, if the median is right here, and then we have a really, really small really group together the middle 50%. Right? The 50% is really close to the median. It's surrounding that median really close. All right, that is 